Welcome to the second part of our antenna analysis series in ANSYS Discovery. Just as a quick refresher, we're trying to evaluate the impact of a Wi-Fi router platform on the radiation characteristics of a planar inverted F antenna or PIFA as it is commonly called. In the previous section, we, show, we went through the geometry and looked at some of the components that could be excluded in the analysis, such as the surface-mounted devices. These components were deleted by taking advantage of the name selections that had already been created. In this part, we're now going to go through the rest of the simulation setup. As you can see here, we are in the model stage. In order for us to do the electromagnetic analysis, we're going to go to the refined stage. Now we are in the refined stage. As you can see in our simulation tab, we now have the electromagnetic option. The first thing that we're going to do for this particular simulation is to assign materials. There are two types of materials that we're going to have in this simulation. The first one is going to be materials that already exist in ANSYS Discovery's vast material library. In some cases, we're going to have the second type of material that is a custom material that we are creating for our specific analysis. Here, we have created the Duroid and Classic ABC materials. And as you can see, each time when I hover over the different material, you see the geometries that are associated with it lighting up. We have already assigned the plastic and the duroid materials after creating them. And so the last thing we're going to do now as a demonstration is to create a material called PVC plastic, and we're going to assign it to the different geometries that have the PVC plastic uh, material assignment. We have already created a named selection here for the materials, for the geometries that are going to be assigned the PVC, PVC plastic, and I'm going to show them now. So we can right click, hide our list, and show these, these geometries that are going to be assigned the PVC plastic. Now, the first step that we're going to make now is to create a new material. Now I'm going to select a material called user-defined solid in discovery. And once I have that material, I can now click the chevron, this double chevron, and come here and specify the material property. Under permittivity, I'm going to say 2.7 and you will notice that once I start altering the material properties of this user defined solid, new options for giving it a new name will pop up right below. Now I'm going to specify its loss tangent as 0 0.007 and then I'm going to go down here and give it a new name. I'm going to call this material PVC underscore classic. Once I've done this, I can save the material to my local library. Once this material has been saved to the local library, I can click save again to complete the process. Now, once I have all my materials created for the custom materials and all of the geometries assigned, I can go to the next step of just cycling through my design to make sure that all the material assignments that I want are correct. In order for me to do this, I can right click, show all, so that all my geometries are shown here. And I can pick, for example, say copper alloy and see which geometries are assigned to copper alloy. I can right click this particular material under the physics tree and select hide others so that I can see all the geometries that will be assigned to the copper alloy. Here, by just clicking in this blank space, I can remove that highlighting feature and just pan to this antenna element and see that the F portion of the antenna will be copper along with the shorting pin and the ground plane. We'll look at this antenna in detail a little bit more in the next step. But using this particular strategy, we can basically cycle through each of the different geometries and see which ones are assigned the different material properties. We will now introduce an excitation into our simulation by creating a port on this particular antenna. 
But first, to make things easier, let's first just turn off the visibility of all the components and then scroll all the way down here and selectively turn on the visibility of the antenna and the surface that will be the port. We can then also come in here and turn off the visibility of the substrate so that we can see all the conducting elements, all the conductive portions of this antenna along with the surface where the port is going to be assigned. To create the port, go to the simulation tab, select an electro under electromagnetics, click on circuit port, and then zoom in and hover over the edge where you would like your port to start and finish, to start from. At this point, we're going to start from the ground plane all the way to the F element. You can click that. Once that is clicked, you can see uh, the 50 ohm impedance that is being suggested here as a standard impedance for return loss calculations, and you can click enter. Once the port has been created, it will appear in the physics tree below here. And then we will see an electromagnetic region created in the physics tree. Here, we can specify our lower and upper frequencies for analysis. Since this antenna is centered at around 5 gigahertz, I am going to set my lower frequency at 2.5 gigahertz and my upper frequency at 7.5 gigahertz. Once the lower and upper frequencies have been defined, Discovery then calculates a quarter of a wavelength at the center frequency to create the offset for the electromagnetic region. In this case, it's going to be a quarter of a wavelength at 5 gigahertz. To show you the electromagnetic region, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and then make all the geometries visible. And then now we're going to double click the electromagnetic region and you can see this box that has been highlighted in blue as the electromagnetic region. 0 0.015 meters was created automatically by discovery and it represents a quarter of a wavelength at 5 gigahertz. Once we have seen the electromagnetic region, we're going to go to the next step of setting some local refinements on some of the crucial geometries that we have in the simulation. This is a step that we're going to take uh, just to ensure uh, the fidelity of the FDTD grid that is going to be created um, for the simulation. We can get out of the electromagnetic region setup by pressing escape twice. And then in this case, we are going to visualize only the antenna and the port surface. So I'm going to turn on the visualization of the antenna and then the visualization of the port. Then I'm going to turn off the substrate so that we can see only the conducting elements uh, and the port. The first um, local fidelity assignment I'm going to set is going to be on the F element. I'm going to create, I'm going to click the F element, then go all the way here under simulation tab to the local fidelity assignment. And in this case, I am going to specify a fidelity assignment of 0.35 millimeters. I've picked 0.35 millimeters because one of the edges of this antenna is approximately 0.7 millimeters and therefore 0.35 would basically be L over two, which would be a good fidelity refinement. After this, I can now go and select two of these geometries, the shorting pin and my port, which are slightly smaller and I'm going to give them a fidelity assignment of L over three, which would be approximately 0.2 millimeters. As I've mentioned before, this is just a way of ensuring the fidelity of the FTTD grid that is going to be developed over this geometry. Once we are done with the fidelity adjustment settings that we did in the previous step, we can then go on and specify the frequency points for our far field, near field, and S parameter. We find this under the simulation tab on the simulation option ribbon. For my far fields, I'm going to specify three points. And for my near field, I'm going to specify one. And then finally, for my S parameters, I'm going to specify 501 frequency points between 2.5 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Once these have been specified, we're now ready to run our simulation. To make sure that all the steps are there and that there are no errors, you will find that this hexagon will be yellow and you have this solve button turned on as green showing that it is ready to solve. You can now go ahead and run the simulation. But before we do that, just a quick recap. 
We had our geometry that we looked at. We assigned material properties. We created a port. And then under the physics tree, we specified the frequency points for our simulation and then did some fidelity adjustments on some crucial geometries. And then after that, we specified the simulation options for the frequency points. And from there, we'll then do our simulation. Thank you for joining us for this second part. We'll meet in the third part where we now look at the results from the simulation.